What's up, everybody? How we doing? I'm Bobby James from Destinique and Drum and Dirty, and you're watching our music inspiration series, Future Live Musicians. In this video, I've compiled some tips and tricks from my experience of playing over a thousand shows on my electronic drum kit. From arenas, to small clubs, to corporate gigs, to festivals, this Roland TD50 drum kit, it's been on the stage with me for the past four years of playing. This is after I made the switch from acoustic drums for the past 20 years. Welcome to electronic drums. So let's talk some of the parts. Let's talk drum heads. Each brand of kit has specific compounds that make up the drum heads and the pads and the cymbals. I like mesh heads for the kicks and the toms and the snare because they feel a little closer to that of a traditional drum head. When you're tuning the drum heads, it doesn't really change the sound, so don't be afraid to tighten them up to get a better feel. The response will be a little nicer. One thing I can say is shy away from using a felt beater on the mesh head for your kick drum as the felt eats through the nylon. I've done it once and you gotta replace the head after that. Pads are better for things like bongos and cowbells and sound effects. Something that needs a little sharper response. Auxiliary snares, that kind of stuff. Let's try a beat. So let's move on to the cymbals and the hi-hats. These are made of special rubber compounds. Cymbals and hi-hats, they're gonna take a little bit more energy to play because your sticks just don't bounce back like wood off of a metal cymbal. So let's hear how the cymbals sound. Drumsticks, if they're not responding the way that you like, maybe you should try some new ones. I tried a bunch of different pairs. I seem to get a better balance with slightly longer sticks. These ones right here, they're Vic Firth's Buddy Rich sticks. I love them, the length, just the taper on it. If you find that they're slipping in your grip a little bit, I like to give them a shave with a X-Acto knife and uh, take off a bit of the finish. This allows the moisture to be absorbed into the stick, making them a little less slippery. Promark, I've tried some of their stuff too. They have the natural line and they're also great for this because they come without the varnish. All right, when I first started to play electronic drums, it felt a little lifeless, you know, compared to the natural acoustics that I was used to, like, you know, from a traditional drum kit. I found that adding a little bit of reverb from the drum module makes things a lot more inspiring. Without the ambience, here's what it sounds like. And now add the ambience. An electronic instrument, it needs to be programmed and amplified. This takes time and practice. Speaking of practice, this is one of the many benefits of an electronic drum kit. You get way more practice time in. So whether you're playing in a funk band or a hip hop act, you can bring any of these drum sounds that you want on stage. Maybe you play in multiple acts and they're all different genres. One of the best things about an electronic kit is that you can change your drum sounds to match whatever the night calls for. In modern music today, the drums are mostly samples. 
These sounds, they drive the energy of the track. Let me show you some cool examples of contrasting styles that I play in multiple different acts. Check this out. So big rock beat, this is Def Leppard style for all you rockers out there. <laughs> this is a club kit that I would use for trap or pop. This is kind of my solid kit for a lot of pop stuff on the dance stages. Okay, so this would be an orchestral kit. Maybe I would do an opening with this. This is a kit that I use for doing a more distorted style, like a breakdown in the middle of a track. And this is a kit I would use in a pop track, say the intro. This is a track that I use for When You Love Somebody, one of our songs. High-rend kits like the TD-50, like this one, they allow me to layer some different samples. I've layered up a dance kick on top of an acoustic kit. The acoustic kit has a nice cut that pokes through the PA and cuts through the rest of the band, but the dance kick layer on top of it, which is from one of my sample packs, allows it to have a nice thickness in the PA where the acoustic kit was lacking. Here it is, just the kick by itself. And here it is with it. As a drummer, I wear multiple hats and bands that I play in. One of them is running backing tracks for my bands. You can use an iPad, you can use a laptop, you can use a MIDI controller, a DJ controller. But after many years of trial and error, I thought I'd share this with you and I've fallen in love with the Roland SPDSX sample pad, this thing right here. I can trigger tracks without letting go of my drumsticks. It feels like I'm performing the whole time on the drums. I'll be doing a whole in-depth tutorial on the Roland SPDSX sample pad later in this series, so look out for it. So with electronic drums, some of the ways that I fine-tune my kits before I get onto stage is I like to record my rehearsals. You can check back if the sounds are blending properly, and uh, many today's electronic drum kits, they allow you to record the MIDI while you are playing so that you can save it onto an SD card or uh, even right into the DAW like this, your favorite Ableton or Cubase, whatever you're using. I'll find a number that's not recorded on right here, and then I'll just play a beat, and then I'll be able to take that MIDI, replay it back through the module, and just choose different drum sets and see what works for the production, if I'm getting close or not. Here we go, recording. And then you can switch the kit as you go in here. So it's super inspiring and you're not using your physical energy, you're actually letting the module do the work and you're flipping through the kits. It almost sounds like you're DJing, <laughs> but it's really great and it's super inspiring. So let's talk hearing yourself. I suggest using a combination of in-ear monitors and stage monitors. You kind of need both. One for the precision that keeps you tight 
with the music and the other to like boom, 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 so you can really feel it. And you should also put up a room mic so that you can hear the other players in the band. When I first started, honestly, I sealed my ears off and it felt like I was playing in the studio. It was awesome. But I quickly learned that you need to hear what the lead singer might be saying. You know, any cues that the band might want to give you, like skip into the next song or cutting the set short, or maybe somebody's got to go to the bathroom. Well, anyways, just remember not to send the room mic back into the stage monitors. I've also learned that if you run your drums into a mixer on the stage and then back into your ears, this does create a bit of latency. This will affect your playing. You won't feel as tight. I like to use wired headphones and I take it straight out of the module. This should be a zero latency mix. This will keep your playing even tighter. When monitoring the tracks for the band, use the aux in and try and use whatever it is on your module that you have. I have a mix in. Try to use the mix in to make it tight with your drum mix so it sounds the way you want. So we've been practicing, we've got our sounds tight, we know what songs we're gonna play, and now you're ready to sound check them and take them on stage. Most sound techs, they're still used to the power of acoustic drums. They're used to the way the acoustics fill the stage. And for the most part, that's the way their mix are set up. That's the way they're used to hearing things. Here's where you have to become the leader. In your tech writer, make sure that you state you are bringing an electronic drum kit. Also make sure to request drum fill monitors on stage. This is for you to feel the drums better and also for the audience to feel the drums better as well. Always request stage fill or bring your own. I suggest 750, 750 watts, the minimum for bigger shows. Make sure that you are heard loud and clear at your setup as well in the main speakers. You might have to change up the overall monitor mix and crank up the drum fill, but you won't have to gate the snare and the cymbals out of the vocal mics. No mics, no feedback, way less cables. And after the drums are sound checked, make sure that they're added in every performer's monitor so that they can hear and feel you. You will also need the band back in your stage monitor as well as your drums to feel the energy like everyone else. For more advanced control, you should consider purchasing a small external mixer. For the bigger shows that my electronic duo Destinique performs, we use the Midas MR18 mixer. This allows us to control our in-ear monitors, record our performance right on the stage, and give the front of house tech up to 16 channels to play with. We can even mix ourselves from the stage if there's no sound tech. When I do some smaller shows and play in cover bands, I like to use a five channel Behringer mixer. This also allows for a room mic, two channel stereo mix of the drums, and lets me run the backing tracks for the bands. Super easy, nice and portable. If you don't get a mixer for the stage, then you can still send the sound tech separate lines out if your module allows it, or just a stereo mix of the drums. And just monitor yourself straight out of the module. Remember that, that keeps it tight. When you are sending multiple lines out of the drum brain, the TD50 allows for up to eight direct outputs. These can be adapted with a quarter inch TRS to XLR snake. This connects the separated drum sounds to the stage input box and back to the front of house. I also use the additional stereo out as the ambience channels that send the effects that I have carefully crafted for each kit. That way the sound tech can blend in what is needed for the room. I call it the John Bonham channel. Let's talk ear protection. This has always been the drummer's nightmare not hearing after the show. Stage volume creeps up and the band's excitement starts turning up the amps, the amp pegs, the marshals. That's just performing live. I suggest in-ears, but you gotta use them with great caution. It's so easy to get all excited and just start turning up the mix while you're on stage without realizing the potential damage that you're doing to your ears. In the past few years, I've made it a goal to play with my ears turned down as low as possible, especially during the long three hour plus nights. I will compensate by driving the stage monitors to the point where I can feel them as much as I can hear them. I bring a sub and I carry it with me for the shows that I don't think are gonna have great monitoring. To get the drums around in town, I drive a minivan. Yes, a minivan. With a big Husky storage box for the kicks and pads and a Husky toolbox for the hardware. I got a snare box for the snare and a drum pedal for the TD50 module and a cymbal bag for the ride and some extra pads. Six pieces in total with the bar system all wrapped up. It's not light when the load in is two elevators and three hallways away from the stage. So get a dolly. Save your energy for the stage. So now we just talked transport for in-town shows with a minivan, but what if you're touring? The great thing about a TD50 drum kit, and I know there's a couple of options on some of the other models, is you can save your sounds and your exact setups onto an SD card and load it into the new kit on the stage at the new venue in the new city or the new country. And all your sounds are on the same cymbal, the same drum kit, the same pad. It's unbelievable the technology that allows us to do this. 
If you're just starting out, budget is probably gonna play a big part in getting your setup together. You can spend anywhere from 500 bucks to a thousand bucks. Those are beginner's e-kits that will get you in the game. You can practice as much as you want. You can start to figure out the many benefits of playing electronic drums as well. Of course, these are less expensive models. They'll have cheaper hardware. The modules won't have as many features, but it's a great way to start and get your feet wet. Beware though, these cheaper startup sets, they're not gonna be as reliable on stage and that's where we wanna go. If you overplay, the hardware tends to move around a bit. Remember how heavy a DW boom stand is? Well, don't expect your beginner's kit with the plastic hardware to hold up to the same punishment. Stepping up the game to a more intermediate setup will range from about 2,000 to 4,000. These modules will come with even better sounds. This will allow you to perform at smaller gigs, such as pubs, lounges, weddings, and even smaller parties. You might be wondering why you should invest in these smaller shows. In reality, the electronic drum kits come with a lot of perks. You can play as hard as you want, and this still allows you to control the volume. No live mics, no feedback, consistent sounds each night, way less money on maintenance and drum heads, and much more comfortable stage volume for yourself and everyone else on stage. Now, if you're really serious and have some bigger shows and some tours lined up, you might consider investing in one of these pro kits like the Roland TD-50. I'm talking 5,000 plus range. These will have sturdier hardware, full-size kicks and snares if you want them, way more advanced drum modules that will allow for multi outputs so that you can split your lines out to the sound man. This meets the professional standards of a touring sound rig with a sound team that will most likely want to control each individual drum. I know this sounds a little expensive, but it is an investment that you most likely won't need to upgrade for a very long time if ever. These are just basic market values for electronic drum kits, but there's nothing wrong with searching around and, you know, getting a used set for half the price. It all comes down to your playing anyways. How much you want to practice? What stages you're going to be on? Keep in mind that whether you're buying an acoustic kit or an electronic kit, you really get what you pay for. But dollar for dollar when buying an electronic kit, you definitely get more creative bells and whistles that go the long run. Thank you so much for watching this video until the end. If you're finding this information useful, please hit the like, comment, and subscribe. Also check out the other episodes in the series link below. They're packed full of information for musicians on every level. Future live musicians, let's go. From studio to stage. <laughs>